I'm Ann Hall Norris, Extension Specialist for Food Preservation and Food Safety. And I'm Elizabeth Coots, the Family and Consumer Sciences Agent in Shelby County. And today, Ann Hall and I are going to be talking about freezing fresh fish. And we're going to talk a little bit about the best practices to do that and also the safety measures to do that because we want our fish to be frozen safely and also we want it to be the best quality that we can. Mm -hmm. And so what is important when you're freezing is removing all of the air from the package, whether it's vegetables or meat. Today we're going to be demoing fish, but removing as much air as pos possible is going to make a better quality product. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the containers and bags that we use for freezing. So the most important part is to make sure that whatever you're using, that it is suitable for freezing. So example, I have lots of containers here. I want to make sure that when I buy a container that I am buying a container that is for freezing. It's specifically designed for freezing because containers that are for freezing, and this one is not, it's a little flimsier, but containers for freezing are a little sturdier. So you can kind of feel from the actual container itself. Now you'll, if you buy them new, obviously you will see, um, you know, the label will say freezer container, but you can also look on the bottom. So like on the bottom of this container, I see there's a little uh, snowflake logo and that means that it's made and is safe for freezing. So you want to make sure that you have that, whether it's on a hard-sided container like this or if it's on a bag, you want to make sure that it is for freezing. And again, with bags, so I have two here. One is storage bag and one is a freezer bag. And I can just feel with my fingers and feel that the storage bag is a little thinner, the freezer bag is a little thicker. And also, the closure of the bag feels a little different. The freezer bag feels um, a little little more secure, okay? So, and there's a purpose for that. It's made specifically to be frozen, and it's made specifically, like Ann Hall said, you know, the goal is to keep all the air out, and so the freezer bags do that a little better. Um, one thing I do want to note, too, sometimes, um, and I have a package here that says it's a storage container, but it says freezer safe, okay? So, it's not a freezer container. It's kind of <laughs> tricky. It it's actually a storage container. It's safe to put in the freezer, but it's not specifically designed to go in the freezer. So just know that if you freeze something in a storage bag or container that's not designed for freezing, you're probably going to get a little less quality that you would prefer with your container. And fish is very delicate. It has a, a real, uh, it, the texture is, is light and, and soft, and so freezing kind of destroys that texture. So you want to take as many precautions as you can before you freeze because you want to maintain that nice texture. And so one of the first things we're going to do is wrap our fillets in plastic wrap. And so you take the plastic wrap, lay the fish on it, press the plastic wrap around it tightly, fold it together, and then you can place that for an added um, safe quality issue. Put it down in a freezer bag, roll it up, get as much air out as possible. You've already gotten a lot of the air out wrapping it in saran wrap, but then you wanna put it down in another freezer bag and seal that before you freeze it. That's one way. Another way, which is the way uh, my dad and I always freeze fish, was to surround it in water. So if you surround that piece of fish in water, there is no air to uh, be on the surface of the fish. So you're gonna get a better quality product. And again, you can use a freezer bag, take your filet, put it in the bag, just wanna cover it with water, and then seal it. You want to get out not all of the air, but most of the air. And then you can seal it flat like that. It's completely covered in water. Or you can set it like this in your freezer. This is going to take up a little bit more space once it's frozen because you're going to have a, a little uh, mound of a product as opposed to a flat product. When I'm freezing in water like that, I like to use one of the freezer containers. Maybe one not this deep, a little bit more shallow. I'll put my fillets in there cover them with water. Just make sure they're covered. You don't want to fill it to the top. And just like in canning, you want to leave a little bit of a head space because when products freeze, they expand. And so you don't want anything to spill out over the lid. So cover your fish in water, snap the lid on it, and then you'll want to write on it 
uh, either with a piece of tape or a sharpie what the fish is and the date. And another way that you can freeze fish is by using freezer paper. So we're going to freeze our last filet here in freezer paper. And since it's a small filet, I'm really not going to need that much freezer paper, maybe about like that. So I'm going to lay it flat. And Ann Hall, if you would lay the fish in the middle. And you'll notice on the freezer paper that there's a shiny side and a dull side. Will you turn it the other way actually? Yes, sorry, and we put it on the shiny side. Yeah, so the shiny side is in. And so what I'm gonna do is hold the edges of the paper straight up like this. And not quite a roll, I'm gonna try to fold it. It's a little, this first fold is a little awkward, but I'm gonna fold it down and fold it down until I can lay it flat just like that. Now, if you would get the scissors over there, since our filet of fish is pretty small and this paper is so long, I'm gonna cut off a good little bit on the end here because it'll be bulky and excessive and I don't need that. And then fold it up and we're gonna tape that. And I'll you put a little piece of tape right there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. I'm gonna fold it in a corner, kind of like you're wrapping a package. <laughs> and then we'll tape that in too. And just like everything else, we are going to label this and date it. When you take your fish out of the freezer and thaw it, it's very important that, well, and even if it's fresh fish, you wanna make sure that you use it within a couple days because fish is very, um, Perishable. Perishable, yeah. <laughs> and so after a couple days, you will notice it will start to spoil. So one to two days really is the ideal um, life of fish in the refrigerator. The best way to freeze fish for the best quality is to use a vacuum sealer because with just the push of a button, all of the air is removed from that bag and you're going to have a very high quality product. So my vacuum sealer has a roll of film. I can cut a bag to whatever size I need. I've already done that. You want to make the bag about three inches longer to allow for a proper seal. And so I have my piece of salmon. This is what I love about vacuum sealing. I can buy a large piece of salmon, cut it into portions that we would eat in one setting. So I'm just going to seal one piece right now, but I have a little bit more than I need on the end of this bag. But I just place the top of the bag in my tray, close the lid. I can do a dry food or a moist food. And since salmon is so delicate, I'm going to hit moist food. I don't want it to really uh, compact the fish and uh, destroy any of my texture there. So I'm going to put it on moist food and hit vacuum seal. And when the light comes off, the light goes off, it's ready to come out. And so you can see I have a light seal. It's not a really strong vacuum seal. The fish is still soft, but yet there's no air in the package. I have plenty of room to label this as salmon and put the date on it. Properly wrapped and packaged fish can stay frozen for six months for the best quality. And when you go to thaw your fish, you want to thaw it under cold water or in the refrigerator. And in some cases, you can refreeze meat, but you don't want to refreeze fish because it has such a delicate texture going in and out of that freezing and thawing process will really destroy that and the quality won't be very good. And then remember that after you thaw it, that you need to eat it within. You need to cook it immediately, yeah, yes. Yeah, cook it immediately. It's not going to stay one to two days in the refrigerator because it's already been frozen. It's not fresh. The one to two days only applies to fresh. If you'd like more information on freezing, you can contact your local extension office.